going on, everybody? I'm Jesse Lozano. We got Madrid. Yo, yo. We got Alex. Hey, guys. We got Sergio. Ladies and gentlemen. We got a special guest. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stephen Palava. I'm a comic book artist out of Denver, Colorado. Ooh, Denver. Yeah. He said his last day, maybe, maybe all hot. <laughs> I know. That's how it works. That's how it works. Can, can you say it a little slower to get him a little bit more wet? Pulava. Ooh, pulava. Put a little bass in there for you at the end, too. I'll put a little bass in there for uh, you. I'm definitely jacking off to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing, because we're right now at a AZ Adventure Con. That's right. So tell me about your art. Tell me what you're putting out to the world. Uh, right now, I, I started about basically drawing when I was a kid like everybody else. Took a long break after high school, kind of came back to it. Wanted to throw my hat back in the ring, see what I could do. So that was probably about three years ago. Started drawing again, trying to get to some cover jobs, things like that. You know, fight my way up the ladder like everybody else. But um, I have a pretty common style. I call it 90s style. Where everybody, you know, all the chicks have big hair, large proportions. Guys have big fat muscles, so that's kind of how that's kind of how we do it. So when you say proportions, is that like you can boobs? say big tits? We don't. We don't. Yeah. Okay. We good. Don't big tits. This, this is adult you know. thing. We're grown up too. Hips, lips, tits. So you see big hair, a bit of S house in your comics. Oh yeah, you know, eighties big hair, Texas style. Oh, oh yeah. They got the lip liner and the three dots under the eyes. Totally. Damn. Do any of the real hot writers? Of course. Somebody's got to have a little writer out there. Well, we're in Glendale, so there's a lot of people that have that around us right now. Oh man. So why would the nineties themes and all that? That's. What I would influence me the most when I was uh, like reading comics and stuff like that. That's what I enjoyed reading. That's what I enjoyed looking at. Uh, guys who formed Image, like uh, give the guys like Jim Lee, who's my favorite comic book artist of all time. Really influenced by like how he draws and his is more subdued. Some other people really accentuate things, but uh, that's just the, that that whole era. Todd McFarlane, all, all those guys really kind of influenced me in my art. So that's kind of how I draw. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. So, do you, uh, with your references with your art and everything you draw, is it particularly just from the 90s, or you just take that style? Just that style, that kind of, that kind of vibe, and, you know, I try to keep it relevant, you know, when you're, when you're talking about comics, especially nowadays, you have to keep your clothes styles and your, your, your hairstyles relevant, so it still pertains to the people who are going to be reading and buy your comics now, and that's kids from anywhere from, you know, 10 all the way to 50, you know, lots of people reading comics yeah. nowadays, so you got to stay relevant. So, um, have you worked with any of the bigger guys, DC, Marvel, anything like that? Not, not directly, no. No. Yeah, I'm still uh, working, doing indie, indie, independent comics, doing some, uh, you know, pin ups with indies, covers for independent stuff. Um, while I'm trying to get my career up and running, uh, a buddy of mine who is uh, currently working on one of the hottest titles in comics, uh, Harley Quinn, Chad Harden. He's um, he's been a friend of mine since forever. He's my mentor. You know, kind of showed me the ropes and stuff like that. I really love his style. I don't really emulate it very well because he's a lot better than me. But uh, he needed somebody to come on the road and help him out, so I basically started managing him. And through him, you know, I've met a lot of people in the industry, but I'm still you know fighting my way up the artist ladder trying to get those jobs. So. Do you have any projects that you're working on right now? Are you trying to get anything going? Um, I just wrapped up a cover for an indie book out of Colorado that uh, is the Chief Number no. 5. It's an alternate cover for that book. And then I'll also be doing the cover for Black Lion Number no. 2 when that comes out. Uh, they're still doing the colors and the letters for that book. So as soon as that's all put together, I'll get the cover, I'll cover artwork ready for that. Yeah. So that'll be probably production next month. Okay. So are you constantly on the road right now with Chad and all that? Yeah, he travels a lot. I book him to all of his shows, so we're probably doing like anywhere from two to three shows a month, every month, starting pretty much this month all the way through November. So, so how does that yeah. feel being actually on the road like that? It's it's tougher to try to get when you're trying to get your own stuff done. It's hard to work on the road. It's hard to put in the time that's uh, kind of necessary for uh, quality that people expect when they're you're looking at doing like say I can cover for a comic book or something like that but you gotta make it work a lot of people do it you know oh, yeah. use the comic cons to kind of supplement the income so they're traveling a lot but they're still doing their work you know still doing the pages still making the books that's what keeps them popular that's why you want to see them at a comic book convention and stuff like that so uh, that, that's pretty much industry wide where everybody's still working while they're doing the shows gotta be a pretty fucking badass rock star to keep that shit going it, you, you, have, you have to be willing to do the sacrifices that's for sure there's a lot of you know a lot of things that you have to kind of put to the side if you want to you know get your books done get your pages done get your deadlines you know all that good stuff oh yeah so um 
saying what you just said right now, actually looking at how chaotic it is, what draws an artist to say, fuck it, this is what I want to do? Well, you know, not every, not everybody actually does, like, uh, comic cons and, and, and travels and does the circuit. If, you, if you're on a book that's fairly popular and you don't feel like you need that extra exposure that a, a con can give you, you can, you can stay at home and just do your pages and, and, uh, and be just fine. But a lot of people feel like they need to touch base with their fan base, get, you know, get their face out there, get them known to the people who are buying the books, and that way, say, like, if you're working on a top-notch book and you move to another book, people will go, oh, well, that artist moved to this book, so I, I like their work, so I'm going to follow them to that title. But you, if you're out there and you're building that kind of rapport with your fans, they're more likely to follow you to your different projects. So it's actually just a bigger play of brand awareness. Definitely, definitely. Pushing yourself out there as a brand, as an artist, as a person, not just associated with one character you can be associated with anything you do that way people follow you from project to project not just wait for you to do that one thing that you're doing for do you like the lifestyle i do it's tough i like that i just i just started doing this just a little while ago but you know i'm i'm 41 and i got two kids they're a little and a four-year-old and a four-month-old mm -hmm. and you know uh, they get they have to stay at home with the while used to you know i usually do the stay-at-home dad thing when i'm home so i can work from home and be with them save money on some you know child care things like that my wife works so it that's tough being being on the road being away from the family that's the, you know that's a tough part but when you're working on pushing your stuff out there networking with the people that you get to meet face to face at these comic book conventions i feel like it's pretty important yeah so uh you know you said a lot of your influences come from the 90s and stuff like that is there anybody currently that keeps you motivated or, or how do you find that motivation you know nowadays definitely but the thing is a lot, a lot, a lot of those guys are still working and True. they're still the, the industry leaders like j scott campbell's a really good you know, like, huge influence to me and he's still you know doing fighting the good fight he's doing right. all the good stuff you know everything he turns out it's like that guy prints money yeah <laughs> he's drawing something he's just making he's just making money i think it's a federal crime yeah <laughs> <laughs> to print your own money yeah i mean you know J. Scott Campbell, Jim Lee, he's still, you know, he's still working, he's still I mean, doing covers and books and things like that, right. so, uh, Will Cretaceo, a lot of the guys from, from from Image, you know, Todd McFarlane, a lot of those guys are still yeah, doing Yeah, he's still it, trying to do that indie, oh, yeah. I mean, the whole, well, I, I don't whole, know if you can still call him indie, but, you know, because he is who he is. Yeah, but. I mean, well, you know, he's, he, his whole thing right now is toys, but, I mean, right. Spawn is a huge thing, and that's exactly, just, yeah. the, you know, the one character that's, uh, that's coming out of the studio, you know, yeah. so... That's uh, good for him, you know. Yeah. He's been, you know, rolling for years, so that's all good. He used to have a store, actually, here at Westgate. Yeah. yeah it was, like, one of the first stores here when cool. this was developed, Todd McFarlane. Nice. Yeah, I, I knew it. his office is here, though. The toy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just think it was weird, just Glendale, you know, you don't see stuff like that that really stands out to you. It's like, sure. holy <laughs> shit. Like, that's a monument in some people's eyes. Yeah. Serge, you got any questions? You're very fucking quiet over there, bro. No, I'm just worried about the sound and shit, keeping that up. <laughs> Man, everybody's got a job to do. Yeah, hey, you know. No, I don't have any questions. Uh, I pretty much answered all of them, so... How's it in Denver right now? I miss that place. Denver's good, man. Um, He's here. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, not, not, not right now at this moment, but you know, he was there recently. I'm telling you right now, dude, we're we're we are due for a friggin' blizzard, dude. It's been like 70s all winter long. Oh, it, 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 in the city, like up in the mountains, they're getting snow, but in the city, it's snowed I think like four times. That's this it. Winter, yeah, like snowed, and the next day it was gone because the sun came out, and it's been 70 ever since then, so probably end of March when people think spring's about to start, we're going to get dumped on for like a week, and nobody's going to be able to leave their house, so <laughs> that's going to that's happen, for yeah. sure. Do you I mean, smoke yeah. a lot of weed? I don't, actually. <laughs> I do not partake. I'm not just saying that because it's like a weird thing. It's legal where I'm from, so it's all good. <laughs> but, um, I, I don't know a lot of people that do, and uh, I'm cool with that. Yeah. It ain't against the law anymore, so... <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? Having a cigarette? Nah, I'm smoking some weed. Fuck off. Oh, no. You know what, dude? I, I, I'm not going to like, point in directions. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But I, I was stopped at a traffic spot. I was stopped here in town. And I was like, man, am I, did I even leave Colorado? <laughs> what is this smell? <laughs> like, it's everywhere. And I was like, every, probably like everybody who was sitting at the, you know, at the intersection waiting for the light had to have been smoking in their car or something <laughs> like that. Were but, you in Phoenix? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Usually how it happens. Usually how it happens. Well, we're, I know... Right now, we're fighting for that, too. Yeah. Like, that that's a big thing. And I think most people just want it. I just don't think there's so much clarity for to sure. it here now. You know, there's a lot of old people here. There's a lot of people we're fighting in Colorado, too. But, you know, I think I, I personally think that more good came from it than bad. You guys just hit fucking make it a billion dollars right. in Colorado. 
There's a lot of good that just yeah. came from that. You know, Fat Jack Super says uh, businesses went up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything fast food stayed open past 2 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Sir, how can we find your work? Do you have your own website, uh, social media, or anything like that? Yeah, Go and shout it out. Social media, I'm pretty, uh, very active on my art pages. So Instagram uh, and uh, Facebook is the artist Stephen Palava. Uh, you can just find that, look it up. You I want to spell that last name for us? P U L A W A. Slower. P U L A W A. Oh, he should be podcasting with us. <laughs> I don't need it no more. <laughs> All right, Serge, you're out. You're the sound guy now. Thank you, guys. Just Steve Shelley with us. <laughs> <laughs> I see why. It's been a pleasure having you, man. No, thanks you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. We'll make sure to fucking post that up. Right make on, sure to man. push you out while you're on the road. I appreciate it. When I see it, I'll post it on my social media, too. Yeah, man. That's how we got to do it. Damn right. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, much. You guys. appreciate it.